people. Because the region that I come from, which is Central America, the five smallest countries of all our region, Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Honduras, and Costa Rica, right now, two of them, Nicaragua and El Salvador, are ruled by socialism of the 21st century. So how can I negotiate as a bloc when I have two countries that are not willing to open to free trade? And for these three ways to work, you need to understand something about Latin America. I had two slides, uh, uh, two pictures, if, if we could put them on, please. The first thing is Latin America has always been ruled by dictators. Then uh, Fidel Castro comes in and he is successful in making a Marxist guerrilla. In the moment that Castro comes in and he makes a Marxist guerrilla, all the countries in Latin America start copying and pasting that model. You had Marxist guerrillas everywhere, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Peru, trying to do the same thing as Castro, financed by the Soviet Union and with the intelligence of Cuba. 1989 comes, the Soviet Union collapses, and the left Marxist uh, wing of Latin America, the socialist uh, sectors, they are in trouble because now they don't have the money of the Soviet Union to keep on going with these violent guerrillas, but they still want to come to power. So what do they do? Well, Fidel Castro gathers together with Lula da Silva and they form the first Forum of Sao Paulo. The Sao Paulo Forum is a parliament that every year gathers together to further on the socialist agenda. And they start working on 1990. In 1998, they put their first president, Hugo Chavez. And that was a relief for Cuba because the money that the Soviet Union was lacking to give, the oil of Venezuela started giving. And now that the oil prices are coming down, they're hoping for Colombia to advance on the agenda to give FARC, the Marxist guerrilla drug dealer of Latin America, places in power. If this happens, we're going to have the first narco-socialist government, which will mean that the money of drugs, it's infinite. It doesn't depend on the market like oil, and then you have another socialism of maybe the 22nd century. So what we need to understand is this regional strategy is not only put it in place in Venezuela, it has been put it in place and tested in Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, Nicaragua, El Salvador, and the places where they haven't governed, they have people who are waiting to come to power. When we understand this, we also understand that when the Berlin uh, Wall fell, and communism was a thing of the past, in Latin America, we voted for the so-called neoliberal governments, the right-wing presidents that were going to open the market. These people gathered together in the Washington Consensus, and they promised that they would give us free market. What did they do? They privatized everything. They privatized electricity, trains, radio stations, but they didn't liberalize them. They gave them as oligopolies and monopolies to their peers, and this created crony capitalism. But for most of the population, the one to blame was free market. I don't know if we can now put the picture, please. For the people, what is needed to be blamed is free market, when free market has never existed in Latin America. So it's always blaming the government, but expecting more government to come in and solve the problem, like this picture shows here. So what happened then? People started voting for socialism of the 21st century because they were going to, uh, you know, fix the mess that this crony capitalist did in the 90s. Venezuela was going to be the promised land. Caracas was going to be the New York City of Latin America. So what happened? All these people get in power, Chavez, Lula, Correa, Evo Morales, and instead of finishing with the privileges, the crony capitalism, the oligarchies, they become even worse. So why is this good news to us? Because people in Latin America don't know what to do. They tried with the right wing, and they think that too much of a free market failed, and then they tried for socialism of the 21st century, and it turns out that it didn't end poverty, it multiplied it. 
So right now, it's a great and excellent opportunity for people like us, for people who really defend liberties and freedom, not only economic liberties, but also individual liberties. Because in a moment where there is frustration to the left and to the right, and everything has been tried, and all of them are statists who want to control the economy, is great news for people like us who want to defend freedom. The examples given here from different regions of the planet demonstrate that freedom works. So what we need to input from Europe to Latin America is the right messages. Those messages include that Scandinavia is not socialist, that we need trade more than aid, and in order for institutions to follow up, it's not about material equality, it's about equality under the law and the rule of law. Thank you very much.